Well, from the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, where you can subscribe to my newsletter, and it's free, and delivered twice daily to your email box, here's a look back at a momentous week in American history as Democrats and the mainstream media continue to try to sell their narrative that surveillance of the Trump campaign was above board and wasn't actually spying. Now, the problem is you're being lied to, gaslighted. Democrats and mainstream media outlets like CNN are telling you that the FBI acted in good faith when they launched an investigation into the Trump campaign. Sure, they may have made mistakes, but they say there was no bias. There was no bias when a secret court rubber stamped surveillance on a Trump campaign and its officials like Carter Page, even when the underlying evidence was fudged. Uh, the report released this week by the Inspector General talked about 17 inaccuracies or omissions cited in that IG's report. And the fake news media and partisan government officials are trying to tell you, oh, don't worry, there was no agenda though. Right. Just like there was no bias when disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok and his lover Lisa Page exchanged tens of thousands of text messages about an insurance policy to prevent candidate Donald Trump from becoming President Donald Trump. And then there's their old boss, former FBI Director James Comey, who took an unearned victory lap after the release of the IG report, still trying to present himself as Mr. Innocent. Of course, the report doesn't come close to vindicating him. No, what Comey and other Democrat hacks in government did exemplifies ends justifying the means. And the ends being, a president they just don't like ought to be removed from office at all costs, even if it means lying to do it. I kind of think the former FBI director would do well to mind the advice from, of all people, Piers Morgan in the Daily Mail this week. He said, cocky Comey should cool his celebratory jets because he has been found guilty of presiding over a disgraceful FBI stitch-up of Trump, and the reckoning is only just beginning. I think old Piers might have it right. I truly do. Well, now let's take a look at some of the questions and comments that you've had on this past week's news. You send these in to us, and we'll take a few of them here. Molly in Virginia writes, she says, Last week, we saw three people killed and a dozen injured in Pensacola at the Naval Air Station. The shooter was a Saudi Arabian national receiving training at the air station. Shades of 9-11, how did this even happen? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, this should have never happened. What's wrong with our nation and security issues at military bases? Well, as you heard uh, on our show this week, Congressman Matt Gates was the first to call it out as terrorism. And he has asked for, and now the Navy and all military branches are renewing a real look at this idea that we have foreign nationals from countries where people might be radicalized coming on our bases. And also reviewing the idea that our own soldiers, who are the best trained people in the whole world on using firearms, would not be allowed to have a firearm on a military installation. I think for most of us, this is shocking. Many Americans were not aware that on the Insulation, whether it's an Army post or an Air Force base or uh, a, a Navy center, that the military people of our country are not allowed to carry their sidearms. And maybe it's time to look that over once again. But most importantly, if we have people that are coming here to train on our military equipment, we better find out before they ever get here whether they hate this country. And if they do, by gosh, don't let them in and show them the door as quickly as we find out they're not real fond of us. Bye-bye. Go. Leave. Well, we received this from someone called Observant and Informed in Florida. And this person says, Mark Levin, attending a, Han a Hanukkah party at the White House, said, it's an honor to be here with the first Jewish president of the United States. Anne Levin went on to say, if he isn't, he should be. So the question is, what in the world did he mean? President Trump is as goy as they get. Well, I, here's what I think he means. There has never been a president, ever, who has been more sensitive to the unique relationship of America and Israel. The relocation of the embassy, uh, the recognition of Judea and Samaria as legitimate parts of the nation of Israel, uh, the fact that this is a president 
who has over and over shown great respect for the relationship that we have. Mark Levin, who is Jewish, I think is quite right. If, uh, if Bill Clinton was the first black president, then I think it's more than fair to say Donald Trump is the first Jewish president, <laughs> who, by the way, has a Jewish daughter, Jewish son-in-law, and Jewish grandkids. Now, we get this from Thomas in Ohio. He's saying this, writing as someone who disagrees with you politically, speaking of me. He says, but is sympathetic to people like you who are barraged by critics who only spew hate rather than solutions. He goes on to say, I believe we need a reformed and energized liberal wing that addresses today's big issues of economic inequality, climate change, and immigration, but with inspiring ideas and wise arguments. And here's the humdinger of his question. He says, does the idea of an intelligent and energized left scare you, me, as a conservative? Doesn't scare me. In fact, it delights me if we could ever have one. <laughs> I truly would love to have relationships, conversations with people who don't agree with me. But I don't want them to pummel me in the head with a club. I don't want them to spit in my food, throw me out of a restaurant, yell at me while I'm putting gas in my car, or scream at me on an escalator while I'm going through an airport. A civil conversation is quite refreshing. Our country is better when we have different points of view. We really are. Look, nobody doubts for a moment of my conservative point of view. In many ways, because of my Christian worldview is where I come up with a lot of my ideas. But I don't hate anybody. And I really want there to be a responsible, thoughtful uh, side of the political coin that is not necessarily in lockstep with me. I just want to beat them every time we have an election. That's... <laughs> In all seriousness, I, I was a better candidate. I was a better uh, servant as a governor because there were people who didn't see it my way. And it resulted in us having to sit down and work through issues to resolve problems. That's how America's supposed to work. So does it scare me? No, I'll tell you what scares me. What scares me is that people continue to yell and scream at each other, fail to be civil, lose their sense of humor, not have the capacity even to sit down, have a cup of coffee or a meal or a handshake or a hug with somebody who's on the opposite end of the political spectrum and then wonder why our country is in such a mess. That's what I'm afraid of. Now, a former missionary named Peter sent this note. He said, Governor, I live in Georgia and went to church with Truett Cathy and his family for years. I've been troubled by the allegations regarding their supposed donations to LGBT and the cave into pressure. I spoke to a Chick-fil-A executive who said this was a media twist that has taken their change in recipients and merged it with the truth of an actual donation of Chick-fil-A money to an LGBT group through misrepresentation. Would you please help us by looking into this story a lot further? Well, let me tell you, I've looked into this story deeply. And, and here's what is very, very disturbing. I don't really care. Chick-fil-A has a right to give their money anywhere they want to give it. But they need to be honest and upfront. And they took it from an organization like the Salvation Army, who, by the way, is a wonderful organization that helps everybody, including people of the LGBTQ community. It's not like they're bigoted, because they aren't. They help anybody who has a need. And I've seen it firsthand time and time again when they do that. They never ask, what is your race, what is your gender, what is your sexual orientation. They don't care. If you're hungry, they'll feed you. If you need clothing, they'll help you. If your house is burned down, they'll help you get a place to stay. And they ask no questions. Just what do you need? So when the Chick-fil-A Foundation decided they weren't going to give to Salvation Army, they started giving to groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a fraud, a total fraud organization that hates Christians and churches. Now, again, they can give wherever they want. But if you're going to do that, be honest and upfront and say, we want to try to give money to people so they won't hate us. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. The left will never quit hating you no matter what you do. So you're not going to make friends with people who are not going to start going to your restaurants because you give them a few thousand bucks here and there. One of the groups they gave to sponsor the uh, Drag Queen Story Hour in public libraries so that drag queens can read stories to four and five-year-old kids. Look, you want to be a drag queen, it's your business. But I really don't think having that with some affirmation at a public library for five-year-olds is really a terrific idea in our culture today. Probably not the best. So 
My position is this. I don't ask you to boycott the business because that's not what I'm about. A lot of great people in the organization. But it is disappointing to see that they're doing something very different than the founder, the late Truett Cathy, would ever, ever have done. Hey, we want to hear what you have to say, so write us at my2cents at tbn.tv. That's my2cents at tbn.tv. And finally, from my Twitter page, where you can follow me at GovMikeHuckabee, I began the eulogy for the historic Time magazine. After several long years of already being brain dead, it appears it finally put itself to rest after offering their Time Person of the Year. In the rich tradition of popes, presidents, scientists, and doctors, they offered climate activist Greta Thunberg now, with respect to this young woman and her parents, no malice towards them, out of all the people on earth who have made discoveries, saved lives, and created life-changing inventions, somehow they found that she was at the head of the pack. As George Bernard Shaw once said, newspapers seem unable to discriminate between a bicycle accident and the downfall of civilization. <laughs> and I leave you tonight on a positive note with this word from the great Winston Churchill, who said, I am an optimist. It does not seem too much use being anything else. That's a good reminder for all of us. So until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe, and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts.